What does it take to become an MD? Take four years of undergrad, take four years of med school, complete your internship slash residency, and then voila, see you guys next week. Ah, lately I wish I studied harder and just became a doctor. And by just became, I know that becoming a doctor is probably infinitely harder than becoming an investment banker. So props to all the pre-med students out there. In this video, rather than covering in detail how to become an MD, because I, frankly, I'm not an MD, I'm just an analyst and a long ways until I could become an MD, most likely won't become an MD. This video is more going to cover the various ranks at a bank and their varying responsibilities building up from analyst to MD. One note of caution is that I am only used to a sell side M&A bank and I understand that different roles at different banks are different size, focused on different investment banking products slash services function very differently. This is just my perspective of what I've seen as an analyst to MD up and the various things that they're responsible for at the analyst level. And I would highly recommend you guys go check out the video. I'll link it here if I know how to link it. That I first made on this channel, what I literally do as an investment banking analyst. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but basically you are at the bottom of the food chain and a lot of your work starts at the administrative level where you you are sending Outlook invites, the notorious alignment of logos, building out the pitch decks and the marketing materials, so on and so forth, organizing logistics, sending out calendar invites. Did I say sending out calendar invites? I sent out a lot of calendar invites this week, so just what's in my head right now. It is partly administrative, but also at the same time, and not to put myself or our role at a pedestal, I also think, especially in the general business world, if finance is under the umbrella of business, being an investment banking analyst is a lot more work and a wide variety of work, I would say, compared to a lot of jobs that you can get right out of college. And that is probably why investment banking analysts are known to be paid more, but also worked a lot. The two years of experience that people typically get as an investment banking analyst, I think the industry tends to appreciate a bit more than others that may have the same year of experience because a lot is tightly packed in those two years. Once again, not to overly drive traffic, but go ahead and check out the video that I mentioned earlier, my first ever video on this channel, the one with the most views filmed on an iPhone camera. I think I do a relatively good job of explaining what my job is as an analyst. After two to three years of being an analyst or the MBA associate route, you can become an associate. And associates are kind of like this buffed up analyst on track to become the MD. I would argue most people take the associate at an investment banking route post an analyst because they have aspirations to become an MD, especially if you've done something else for a couple of years or even 10 years and then took the MBA route to transition into banking, you're really in it for the long run. Associates, as I said, before as a buffed up analyst can do every role, everything that an analyst has done. They've done it before or they're ready to do it. And then on top of that, they're more knowledgeable in the finance world so they could carry on harder, higher level analyses and run with client contact a bit more, run the diligence process, be able to lay out different marketing materials. They serve as the middleman between the junior bankers and the senior bankers. The VP also kind of does this role, which I'll explain later. But essentially, Associate is a buffed up analyst on track to become an MD, hopefully. They're running with a lot of the more complex things that an analyst lacks the experience for, and also working very tightly with the analyst to push the junior banker responsibilities forward. This might only be a R bank thing, but Associates are a lot of times responsible for setting up and coordinating logistics between parties, so internally, externally, client, buyer, third party. And then on top of that, this is probably specific to our bank as well, but they're also responsible for executing confidentiality agreements or NDAs between parties that are about to receive a marketing material book or getting ready for a meeting that you're about to share confidential information for. Really appreciate my associates, not to kiss ass publicly, I don't think my associates even watch this video, but they basically help the analysts out tremendously and you have a good associate, you have a good life. V. P. When I first learned about banking and I heard VP, typically when people say VP, vice president, it's probably this one person that is directly in charge right under the president. There are a lot of VPs at investment banks and probably a lot of businesses have VPs. This is probably more folklore than truth, but I heard that because VPs at various firms, including investment banks, are typically at the forefront of leading client dynamics after the MD. They want this kind of higher level title so that they could say, I'm a VP and I'm talking to you. At the same time, it kind of makes sense because VP is your first transition into becoming an officer at the firm. You get a bio at the company website and the company's really trying to invest in you and thinking of you long term and you're doing the same. Once you become a VP, it's probably a bit harder to jump to something else unless you're trying to become a CFO of a startup or trying to start something on your own. If you're a VP at a firm and you've gone through the analyst or the MBA associate track, done your three years as an associate and now you are a VP at a firm, you're thinking about 
expanding your vertical, maintaining your client relationships, building repertoire with MDs and junior bankers, and hoping to become a MD at the firm, a partner at the firm. VPs are known as the quarterback of the deals that I'm on. They're really the ones that are maintaining and executing the deal process from start to finish. While they might not be getting too crazy into the weeds of data or marketing materials, they're definitely directing it. They're understanding what the buyer needs, what the client needs, what the entire process needs, and really, really serving as the bridge between what the MD wants versus what the junior team can do and vice versa. The more I think about it, maybe vice president really is a suiting title given that the MD of a deal might be considered the president and the VP is really executing things after VP but before MD and I don't know if this is my firm specific but there's a rule called director right after VP. They're a bit more advanced than the VP but not right at the MD level yet and depending on how good you are at sourcing deals which I'll explain in a bit later your director phase could be very short or it could be extremely long and during this time you are functioning kind of as still the quarterback but you're letting VPs do the work your real thing is to maintain client relationships and go for that partnership role as an MD I would assume if you make director or the director equivalent at your firms or at other firms you're really not trying to escape banking anytime soon and your goal is to become a partner I would say on a lot of my deals unless they're huge deals there's usually only one VP or one director per deal Hmm, this is me trying to think about a proper analogy to compare VP to director and it's kind of hard. Hmm, this is a terrible analogy and I really hope none of my directors are watching this video, but you know those diagrams where it's a frog going from an egg to a full frog and there's that one minor step in between two relatively bigger steps at the end where the frog is basically almost formed but they still have a bit of the tail left. But if you saw it in real life, you would think it's a frog. I think it's that step is the director of the investment banking promotion timeline. Huge fan of frogs. And then finally, to address the clickbait title, and I guess I'm not making a clickbait by saying this, but the MD, managing director phase. You are a partner at the firm, at least that's how our firm is structured, and you have ownership of the firm, and you are responsible for sourcing business, overseeing the entire process, and just being a freaking boss. When I first entered investment banking, I really didn't understand this idea of sourcing a deal. What does that even mean? Why would a client give business based on relationship building? And now looking back, I realize how stupid that thought was because what else would you give business to aside from relationship building in a field like ours where surprisingly a lot of stuff is subjective yes you can give great financial analysis yes you could have a lot of credentials at the bank which i think is a pretty big component of being able to source deals but largely it is about relationship building and you at the end of the day think about yourself you want to work with people that you know you want to work with people that are easy to work with that almost supersedes how great that person might be at their job. And that's very controversial, but also not relevant because most MDs who are sourcing deals very well and successful at their firms are already good at their jobs to begin with. So they have to beat that with a subjective measure, which is being able to maintain these relationships. Certain firms, including mine, have a specific group of MDs that their sole job is to maintain relationships with clients. This goes to things that you guys might think about and probably different in the age of Zoom, but going on trips together, hanging out, going on golf trips, jumping on the phone, and understanding where the market is. In terms of sell side M&A, these bankers, these MDs are jumping on the phone with private equity firms and asking them about their various assets, when they're thinking about exiting those assets, who they're thinking about selling to, getting a grasp of the market, and your ability to maintain these relationships, figure out when these clients want your firm to pitch for them is your job and the majority of your job is being able to bring in business create these pitch decks pitch for those businesses that tell you hey come pitch we're probably going to exit soon and we're choosing one bank to represent us out of a bunch and we want you to win because we had that great conversation and you've been on top of our game for the past five years you know us inside and out from all these conversations we just want to make this final check and understand that you can value our company properly and run this process. In the big picture wise sense, while the journey is long and becoming an MD could take 10 to 15 years, it's pretty cool and pretty damn exciting. It's all about relationship management and being able to understand businesses, but it's not solely a sales job. No offense to sales, sales is cool, but it's this fun combination of sales and finance and business and just the juxtaposition of everything under the business sphere. Bottom line, MDs maintain relationships. They know everything there is to be about finance. They usually specify a certain sector or group so that they can be the expert in that area and maintain relationships and credentials within that area. So whether it be industrials or business services, 
consumer, healthcare, technology, and they make a lot of freaking money. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Really, really appreciate the 5,000 subscriber mark that I actually just hit as of filming today. I can't believe that I'm at 5,000. That's crazy. I don't even know 5,000 people. I probably don't know any of you, most of you personally, because my friends are definitely not watching these videos. Really appreciate it. I am moving this week to a new place within Chicago. My plan is to have a video on that place relatively soon. Maybe you guys don't care where I live or how I live, but thought that would be a fun video to make after two investment banking videos back to back. Thanks again so much for 5,000 subscribers. Have a great day. See you guys next time.